I want to tell you the story about this painting I created last year called Trading Coins with Horses. As you can see, it's quite a large work. It's about nine feet across by about uh, five feet tall. It's on multiple panels. These panels I was working on, a lot of them separately. They weren't all conjoined like this to be one painting. They were a bunch of individual bits, like I was working on this piece separately from all the rest. This tall mountain face. It was something I started really early and I started with the face, which I often do to get myself excited in my process and in my work and to have something to hold on to that I like. But it just kind of felt like whatever and it was kind of a palette on the ground. You can see that right in here where I was just mixing paint. There's a bunch underneath where I was doing this as well that's not showing through, but you can see some of the earliest stages. You can see it all the way down to the wood right here. That's the wood showing through right there. That's the wood showing through. And I love to have that in the work to show a history of, you know, where the piece started, where it ended, how many layers are on there. Not like you can see them or count them, but uh, I know there's a lot in it. It gives the piece a real history. And during that history, the piece will take on a lot of shapes and forms and changes and transitions. Things get painted over. What you see is a lot of left behind. A lot of even in the details in here, these are all fractures where I painted over everything and left something, painted over everything to make a new shape in the arm, but then made a new shape over that shape I previously made till I find the form and expression that suits the character within the piece based on how I think he should feel or what I see or feel from him or it or them. And I just kind of keep working the piece until I achieve what I believe to be the perfect expression for these people and creatures and what they're doing. I don't come up with a plan ahead of time. Rather, I paint spontaneously and improvisationally and then just kind of look for how I react to the piece emotionally to decide whether it's done or correct. And uh, when I can't figure things out, I fracture the piece and add extra things that I think at the time don't even make sense. I do this on purpose to avoid writing a story or thinking I know too much about the piece before I really know what's going on. This horse took on a lot, a lot of forms. You can see here, you would never know, but that was a shark fin. There was a shark in here. This little guy came in early on. That is now me driving this big thing, controlling it and navigating it. Um, and, uh, you know, the horse was, well, the horse wasn't even there. Actually, somewhere after the shark, this thing became a boat. You can see the bottom of it. You can kind of see the sail of it, but it's kind of a house now. But in there, that was all sails and down here was, you know, the boat and where people would sit. And uh, I don't know that I started painting a horse over it. I started going back and forth. I thought horse boat, what could that mean? What is that? You can see other faces in here that then got blasted over. <clears throat> Hiding in here are some small little symbols of a horse and some horseshoes. He's relaxing. He's just wandering around these mountains, these small little mountains. There he is resting because he was too tired, which is a bad, not a bad, bad time, but a bad time for me. I was, I was tired and worn out from a lot of hustling. Being an artist isn't always just painting pictures. There's a lot of other stuff you gotta do. But anyway, we're not talking about that right now. Um, so anyway, some key things we see in this painting is uh, this big structure here was kind of house on the hill and it's interesting because I started this painting uh, like I say like over a year ago it was before I went to Sedona I've been working on it for about a month some of the pieces had joined together I think about these two I think were together and I think these two were with those so all this was kind of going on this was still separate background color was so different there was kind of a hill but there was no house on it but um i was working it but i bring up that house because while i was in sedona and i couldn't work on it it was back in my studio 
I was teaching an art class for three days. It was a really good one. I was able to get really deep with the work I was creating and demonstrating there. And I had an experience where it started out as a joke. I had a person that I was painting and I said they were the, they, I, I said, what are they, should they have in their hand? That doesn't make sense. And I decided a broom would be funny because it looked like this big warrior woman or man, I can't even remember. And uh, I thought, wow, that's funny, they got a broom. They're just sweeping up and then I continued the painting and eventually I got to this point where it became the uh, keeper of the constellations and they kept the constellations organized and clean up in space and they were this ancient god who did this. They had a constellation themselves in my mind in this painting. And when I came back to work on this piece, I put this little house up there, this structure, and uh, it was really clear to me that that was the house where the keeper of the constellations lived. And it really impacted how I felt about the painting. I mean, it was kind of a joke, but then all of a sudden this thing went from like, oh, there's a horse in the desert and he's trading, he's talking to this guy. They didn't even have the coin in their hand at that time or this rainbow. Like I say, the background was an orange. It was, I don't know, I'm going to see if I can find a photo and insert it here when I get back from just... Uh, capturing this anyway uh, <clears throat> when I came to the situation where I saw this house up here and decided it was the keeper of the constellations I was like wow this is really potent this is a really magical place where these guys are at and uh, I, I spent a week away from the piece I was in Sedona who knows how many other days till I started working on it and I came in with a long shot looking at it into my studio in the room and all of a sudden it all kind of made sense. Like I was like, well, who are all these guys on the left here watching this situation or what are they? And I was like, oh my God, these are like two of these here are replications of mountains I had previously painted. They don't look the same, but I know that they were representations of these. And to me, those mountains, man, I mean, I, I've been painting them off and on for 10 years I've made 12 giant mountain paintings and I was like that's me man that's all you've accomplished or done or done to separate yourself from what you used to be and what you want to become and you know you've you've amassed all this uh savings and uh progress and accomplishments so that you didn't really have to rely on anyone because I never really had much to rely on in my life from a young age, I was on my own. But uh, anyway, that doesn't, not, well, it's relevant, but that's not the focus here. So, you know, here's all these guys, and then here's this one. He's, he's a bit softer. He looks pretty worn out, but he's, he's kind of caring for these others. And I was like, wow, they're all me. Look, another mountain in the background. There's three. I was thinking there was two, but there's this guy too right here. And, uh, and then this guy here is holding this bear. And to me, that's like, I paint a bear and I shouldn't go outside. That's like hibernation or protection or get away from me. I need to break from life right now. But then here he is, out, the rainbow's touching him and he's with this guy. And I painted this circle in just as an aesthetic move between these two characters, this horse and this guy. And I thought it was the sun. And I was writing, I think something about coins in the sun and gold like the sun and gold comes from the sky, not from coins. But in the end, what I really realize here is it's he's trading that coin to this horse. He already has a house on his back, so he can just relax on this beach, which can sound, I don't know how it sounds to you. I know what it means to me, so it sounds pretty potent. But it's like all this work you did, all these things you did, all this time you've been collecting and saving and waiting for this big moment of not even relaxation, but true freedom. I mean, there's freedom and there's freedom. There's when you, you know, you, you've paid your way out of doing whatever you want, but then you've done it long enough that you really realize like what freedom means to you and that it's a clear slate to just be and create and kind of take your thoughts in when you're hustling. It's hard to do that. And I spent a lot of time hustling and taking things in, but not fully. And I feel like this painting was a real realization when I created it, but then here we are, like a year later, I'm talking about it. And I kind of really recently, just in the last couple of months, have been engaging in this level of freedom with myself and taking things off my schedule and saying no to things 
not putting them on my schedule on purpose and not getting nervous from that experience, which I usually do. I'm like, what are you doing? You should be taking on all the jobs you can, but instead I'm letting them go and taking on deeper creativity and uh, space to kind of take in the things I'm actually doing. And anyway, back to this piece, when I really took it in now, it's like, wow, man, you painted this a year ago. This was a really firm message you've painted three other firm messages in this uh, lane and it's time to listen and just really thinking about I don't know just this part of it that he's trading the coin to the horse and how potent that is to me and that's kind of where I'm at and what I got to do in life is like you got to start just to if you want that freedom just use that savings and just uh, you know do whatever you want to do instead of what you think you should do or what's gonna give you money for freedom just kind of engage in the freedom and see what comes of it and uh, so far it's been pretty awesome but that'll be a whole nother video in some ways I feel like I didn't talk that much about this piece because there's so much more going on but uh, we're already at 11 minutes so I thought to myself before I started this I'm a much better talker than I am a typer and that is definitely true what I just see here with this 11 minutes. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this piece and I'm not making you see six side to side, trying to let you see it in this view, but it's kind of nice. Let's get some close ups and we'll just call it again. This was trading coins from horses. So I might do a more involved video to really dispel or maybe I'll end up tacking it on the end of this eventually. So it's one cohesive piece. But uh, I think it's a piece of the information that people really miss about my work. They see it, they hear me say it's stories that tell themselves to me, but I wanna start sharing those stories with these paintings because it's so important to me. It's kind of the main reason for painting them, sure to get a pretty picture, but more so to get this information and understanding from doing the work and seeing the finished piece and being able to see the feelings and kind of understand them from that perspective rather than theorizing about what I should do about the future. I try to let this help me feel what I should do and when I do that I tend to find a really nice alignment and uh, existence because I'm satisfying my feelings rather than these ideas that might be mine or might just be precious ideas from the outside about what I should do or what or where worth comes from but Man, life can be pretty awesome if you uh, let yourself do what you want and find ways to let yourself do that more and more. All right, I'm going to cap it off, cut myself off. That was trading coins with horses. Hope you dug that video. Thanks.